and this big old transformer crane comes up and just like yanks the wood. <laughs> I thought I'd make a quick little video on how I chip wood. I don't know. This is kind of how I was taught to do it. Maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. This is the easiest way I learned how to do it. So here goes nothing. One thing I learned was to always grab the wood that's on top. As far as the top of the tree is on top. So that when you flip it in like that. There's nothing distracting that top from flipping over. So like this nasty ash right here. You see how the top of the tree up there is on top of everything? That way when you flip it over to the middle of the chipper, it feeds right through. I don't know if you can see that little knot that's welded on there. That's actually the center of my throw. So that's how I keep an eye on what the center is. If you have those trees like that right there that are on top, when you flip them over into the middle of the chipper, if there's nothing else on top of them, it's the easiest way to do it. And it makes less of a mess. And Adam cuts the wood down. He lays it down just like this, so there's a perfect order to them. When you dissect them the way that he dropped them down, it's really easy. And it makes it look like you know what you're doing because it's a lot simpler. So, it's like these there, the tops that are on top, so that way you're not grabbing the wood that's underneath. Because when you grab that wood that's underneath, what happens is you twist all your tops together, and then it's hard to flip them like that. So when you flip them, you want them laid out real nice. If you feather them out real nice, you want them laid all out next to each other. If you're gonna put multiple trees in the chipper, because the point of this flail, obviously, is to get the bark off. So to get the bark off, you want them laid out, not on top of each other. But see how they're all feathered out real nice next to each other like that? That way the most bark can get beaten off of that way. So, I put some chain in it today. Got quite a bit of chain in this tree now. She's making a good amount of bark. Those tops are kind of twisted together because you've got some nasty grapevines up in there. And this small ash. So that's how I do it. And you just kind of do it like that. It looks simple enough, right? So chunk it. And every now and then you get a big one up here. I'll set it all back. Tom set up back there slashing. There's a lot of logs on this job, so when he set up back there away from me, that way he can keep slashing, slashing, slashing. We don't have to have trucks here or anything. So he's able to keep going just a little bit easier. But yeah, if you keep an eye on that wood's all going in there real nice, straight. This one right here is right. Yeah, see that one's right on top. Those are kind of right in line with my chipper. Them are, they're about perfect. These ones I gotta flip over to get in line. It ain't no big deal. You gotta flip them a little bit. It's when they're way wrong angle of the chipper that it becomes a nightmare. As long as they're at the right angle, the chipper's kind of at an angle like this right here. So if all your wood's in that angle, all you gotta do is just flip that top in there real nice for both sides. It takes a skitter guy a little while to figure, every, figure everything out. It's not as simple as it looks, but it's not rocket science either. And the most important job is whenever you're pulling wood or working out here doing anything is to make it simpler and easier for the next guy. If you make it easier for all the guys around you, everything works out pretty good. And uh, even 
something like Paul, he started working for us oh, two years ago, three years ago. And uh, he worked for his father. And it took him a little while to figure out how to how we do things because their chippers are they got a couple tree lens and they're set up different, so you pull wood up to them totally different. So it, it just takes a little while to figure it out. Watching some watching somebody do it's the easiest way to learn. But it's kind of tricky with this flail because come on, get in there, there's so much more going on than just say a whole tree chipper or something because you got this conveyor right here that's constantly dumping bark off it. So you constantly gotta keep that clean and then bring wood to this side. But on my first day, I got my skitter blade stuck in the chain. I felt like an idiot. And uh, he had to stop it. Lift it up so I get my blade out of there. It was, it was something, I won't say it's stupid, but it just takes time to figure it out because you're, you're trying to see where to drop the wood here, but you gotta look in the front because you don't want to get caught in your conveyor. You don't want to leave the wood so far away from the chipper guy that he can't reach it, which is what exactly I was doing. And then for some dumb reason, my like second week of work, I was running that old timber jack 480. And I was pulling up about where Josh is right back there right now with that cat. I was sitting there, and they were full of wood here at the chipper. Old, that old flail and so I'm sitting there waiting for him to get the wood out of the way because you don't want to stack a bunch of wood it can get nasty and, uh, you twist a bunch of wood together with old Randall was his name I don't think anybody knows who he was he was chipping at the time and if you put too much wood next to chipper you got your butt you know and that happened couple times. I learned real quick how Randall wanted his wood in the chipper. But so I'm sitting behind a chipper, he's got wood up there. For some dumb reason, dumb reason, I decide to put my blade down. So I put my blade down. And I'm watching him, you know, I've worked here two, three weeks or something now. Don't have a clue what's going on still. And uh he gets a side cleared out of the chipper. So I pull, I go take off, pull some wood up there. And don't lift my blade up. Well, if you're working the wood, you know what happens next. Because that blade finds a stump somewhere. Well, I was going about, I wasn't going fast because that 480 didn't go fast. I was cruising along though. Cruising along, and all of a sudden I hit that stump. And I'm so glad it had Lexon windows in it. I went off, I went right over the steering wheel, and I smoked like the side of my, like the side of my head over here, went right off the windshield. I mean, my whole body was off the seat. I mean, I just it come to a stop like that. I smoked my head off the windshield, and oh, I just sat there and sat there. You know how it is when something, something like that happens. You gotta sit there and recoup a little bit. I sat there for a couple minutes and pulling that bundle. I went home that night. I had a big old red spot in the back of my head, a big old pop, pop knot in the back of it. Lacey remembers I had a giant red spot in the back. That was kind of my deal there, learning that trick there. I never put my blade down again because I'm not gonna have that happen. But yeah, if that would have been glass or something, I'd have shattered that thing. But they got this Lexon in them now, there's stuff here. Pretty serious stuff. It works good. A little better than glass and grains. I don't like the grains, you can't see nothing out of it. So, I don't like grains because see, you guys couldn't see as good. You can see a lot better with this Lexon. So for you guys, it works real good. I'm happy with it too. That's how I kind of dissect this wood. You get everything that's on top, so I'm not digging wood off from underneath. Then you get to trying to pry wood up and down that's underneath other wood. And it, it just becomes more work than it is. 
wear and tear of the machine for no reason. As long as you just keep grabbing that tree that's on top every time, it works out really. Get out of there. See that one try to get into my bucket? Ooh, nice try. You get that wood that's on top, I get every time it flip her in there, it goes really well. It's a lot easier. You're not fighting with yourself or making a mess. See that one? It's going to try to get in my bucket. Everyone that sticks up like that, you got to grab out of the way. It seems to be those ones that get up in your bucket. It's not the fitting off. Get over here. Remember the ones that drive me nuts right there. Get right out of here. Yeah, that's how I dissect wood. That's how I chip in this thing. Yeah. Each bundle is different than the next. It's kind of interesting. There's some a logs and a couple of these and some firewood and stuff. So I just heal it over like this and sort it out. Throw it over and then the skitter guys will come back that, spin it around and take it back over the slash or that way we're not. I'd like to chip all that wood. If I could chip logs all day, I'd be a happy, happy man. Get a lot of wood out today, but the people wouldn't be happy. That's what the uh when Mike started flailing in 94. I'll do a little video. He'll have to. I should get him on camera. He started flailing October 1st, 1994. So that's coming up here in a little while. It'll be his 23rd year running these flail chippers. But when he started, he was running the chipper, and that's all they chipped. They were doing the mills wood. They were chipping just everything. There was no slasher or no cutter, nothing on site. If something didn't fit through the chipper, they just got a chainsaw out, cut a chunk off it, and shoved it back in. But he chipped pure big, not pure big wood, but a lot of huge wood. And, uh, boy, would that be nice. Boy, would that be nice. So he chipped a lot of good stuff. He's got some good stories. Wish I'd get him on camera more. I got him on there for that chainsaw video. Uh, that one turned out pretty well for my little rinky dink channel. It's got over 9,000 views. He's good on camera. I need to get him more. But he started playing on 94, and they were chipping a lot of logs, man. He was, he was putting out quite a bit of wood. A lot of wood. He's got the old books. He wrote it all down, which is cool. I wish. I write a little bit down, but I don't write down as much as I should. How much we do in a day. He's got it all recorded of what they did on certain days. Even got the weather. Pretty cool stuff. We got a little bit of rain. Can't see out the front window. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. 